In this example, I'm going to do an independent samples t-test using the formula for equal sample sizes. So let's um, pretend that these are um, two randomly assigned treatment groups, one involving uh, nicotine gum and the other involving um, meditation treatment, both for smoking cessation. Uh, let's pretend that the numbers here represent number of cigarettes smoked in the past a week and we want to do a comparison to see if there is a significant difference between the um, X1 which we'll call the nicotine gum condition and group 2 which we'll call the meditation condition. So since there are equal sample sizes we can use a slightly easier formula than for when there are unequal sample sizes. We can take the mean for one group, subtract the mean for another group and divide it by the standard error of the difference between the means, um, which we can compute by taking the square root of sum of squares for group 1 plus sum of squares for group 2 over little n, which is the within group sample size, times n minus 1. So that'll be 6 times uh, 5 for this problem. All right, first step is we can calculate the means. Well, let's first get sum of x, because we're going to need that along the way. So sum of x, if we add up all these scores, um, adds up to 24. And the mean for this group, if we take 24 divided by 6, we get 4. Um, we'll continue with the rest of the calculations for this group before we move on to the second group. We will also need, when we calculate the sum of squares, we will need, as an ingredient in that, the sum of the squared x's for this group. So in order to get that, we'll square up all the scores within this group. 0, 9, 25, 100, 16, and 4. So if we add all those together, we get sum of the squared x's for group 1, which is 154. All right, so now we can calculate the sum of squares for group 1. The sum of squares for group 1 is going to be sum of the squared x's for group 1, which is 154, subtract sum of x squared, which is 24 squared, over n, which is 6. So we have 24 squared divided by 6, which is 96. So sum of squares for group 1 is 90. And the right hand side is 96. The left hand side is 154 minus 96. And we get 58 for the sum of the squared deviations from the mean for group 1. And for, um, now we'll just do the same calculations for group 2. So we'll take sum of x for group 2, which is 78. And we'll get the mean by dividing 78 by 6, which gives us 13. And then also we'll need the sum of the squared x's, so we'll need to square up all these scores. So we'll get 225, 49, 25, 21 squared, 4, 41, 100, and 400. So if we add up all those squared scores, we'll get sum of the squared x's for group 2, which is 1,240. So now we can calculate the sum of squares for group 2, which will be 1,240, sum of the squared x's, subtract sum of x squared, which is 78, 78 squared over n, which here is 6. We take 78 squared, we get 6,884, divided by 6, we get 1,014. So 1,240, subtract 1,014, we get sum of squares for group 
to which is 226. So we have everything we need to plug into uh, the equation now um, in the numerator. We have, uh, we, well, I guess we'll subtract um, the, this, the larger from the smaller since the way that's the way the formula is set up, but it wouldn't matter if we did it the other way around. Um, we'll take the mean 4 and subtract the mean from the other group, which is 13. So we'll get negative 9 in the, in the numerator. So mean for group 1 is 4 minus 13. That's going to give us negative 9. And then in the denominator, we add the two sum of squares together. So that's 226 plus 58. Over n times n minus 1, which here is 6 times 5. Because there's 6 people in each group, which gives us 30. We have negative 9 in the numerator divided by 226 plus 58 divided by 30. Then you take the square root and you'll get 3.0768. That's our estimate of the error. 3.0. Seven six eight. So it looks like we have almost three times as much difference between the means as we would expect to find uh, simply by sampling error. So we take negative nine and divide it by three point zero seven six eight, and we get two point nine. Okay, so two point nine. Um, is our t observed. Now with degrees of freedom of big N, which will be the total sample size, which here is 12 minus 2, so it'll be 12 minus 2, we'll have degrees of freedom of 10. So we'll need to look up what is the um, critical value that we need to achieve. So let's say we're using alpha 0 0.05 alpha 0 0.05 two-tailed. And we'll need to look it up in a table or an online calculator. And we have degrees of freedom 10 We'll put alpha 0 0.05, and then for two-tailed, we needed to get to 2.22 in order to reject the null hypothesis of no difference between the groups. Now, since we did exceed 2.22 for a two-tailed test, we would have had to get to, pretend that's a t-distribution, would have had to get to either positive 2.22. Actually, our answer here is negative 2.9 since we have negative in the numerator. Or we would have had to get to negative 2.22. It's really arbitrary depending upon which group is labeled as 1 and which group is labeled as 2. But basically, since we got to negative 2.9, we are clearly in the rejection or significance region. Um, this would be a fairly unusual score if the null hypothesis um, was indeed true. In fact, we could look up the p-value for that. So to get 2.92 in a two-tailed test with 10 degrees of freedom, we'd find that about 1% of the time if the null hypothesis is true. So it's fairly unusual, and in most instances we would take that as pretty strong evidence against the null hypothesis and reject uh, the null hypothesis. I might also want to investigate the effect size. Uh, we'll look at Cohen's D 
for the independent samples t test. Now there's various formulas for this, but we'll use one where we take, of course, the difference between the means, which we calculated to be negative 9, divided by the standard the pulled standard deviation, which we can calculate by taking sum of squares for group 1 plus sum of squares for group 2, as we did before, over now the degrees of freedom, which were 10. So we have negative 9, but we can really drop the sign for that and just make it 9 over two sum of squares combined, which is 226 plus 58, which gives us 284. 284 divided by 10, which, which are our degrees of freedom. And then we take the square root of that to get the Cohen's d value for this comparison. 284 divided by 10, take the square root, we get 5.329. So 9 divided by 5.329, we get 1.69, which is a, a fairly large uh, value for Cohen's d, meaning that these two means are about 1.7 standard deviations, pulled standard deviations apart. Now that's a rather large finding, but these are, are made up data, so it's no surprise. Um, one thing we should note is the data here um, may violate the um, equality or homogeneity of variance assumption. And in that case, we may not want to use a straightforward um, independent samples t-test, the student's t you might instead want to employ some sort of correction uh, like the Welch's T, which is much better done um, using uh, computer software. So that's uh, an example of a equal sample sizes independence uh, samples t-test um, conducted uh, using hand calculations.